I started writing poetry age 70 and I'm picking up speed. Two weeks ago I was in Sussex at St Cuthman's and I saw a crop of Worcester apples lying on the ground. It made me think of all the refugees who didn't make it to Europe. So this is called refugee status. The apples lie unburied in the grass. One side is green, the other red. But colours fade when you are dead and lying at sea level. The waves delivered Aelan to the shore. His skin was dark and mine is light. But colours fade when you take flight and end up at sea level. The parties wait, uncertain in the main. One brand is red, another blue. But colours fade when you are through with lying at sea level. So pick the fruit, unblemished, while you can. One side is red, another green. But colours fade once you have seen we're equal at sea level. Now, here's a fun poem about coffee. It's called Barista Dreams. Coffee soars. Transcending cup or mug, it feels its steamy way into the soul to settle scores, to open pores of understanding, lubricate negotiation of a deal and knock on doors unvisited and maybe unimagined by the guy without a bean. Coffee rhymes, not in a mundane sense like coffee rhymes with toffee. No, coffee chimes with Sufi rhythm, gently whirling till the body wakes and stretches into leisure times unafforded, so unknown by the guy without a bean. Coffee shocks. English kings and Prussian emperors, Ottomans, all tried to ban it from their docks as heresy, subversive or not kosher for the Jews or Turks or Mormons, as it rocks the mental coffers, safely populated by the guy without a bean. Coffee earns. It's worth a bob or two to those who import, roast and package it. Whoever learns the story of its harvesting could buy fair trade, support the farmer, so he overturns the exploitation of the crop, now sweated from the guy without a bean. Coffee hooks. So Starbucks, Brew Lab, Steampunk thrive on pressured percolation. Jargon spooks us with decoction, drip filtration, and much studied preparation. But the books about addiction hold no interest for the guy without a bean. Coffee spoils. If you boil it, waste it, spill it, but it neatly foils loneliness, a drink soon oils the rust of solitude, inspires that kind but risky invitation, and uncoils the wardrobe of a hedgehog heart to wrap a coat of friendship round the guy without a bean. Now, seeing we're in France, here is a short French poem about a village called Najac. It's about the transition from summer to winter, if you're a tourist place. Najac in autumn. Ce village fantomatique qui se casse belle le beau Najac, sans touriste atmosphérique, il va réger sans hamac d'hiver, sans aucune panique, Laissant l'été montrer le ressac. Now, back to Wales. I saw a photo of the Diffie estuary at low tide, with all the sandbanks exposed. Someone was talking about the Camber Sands, and I misheard that as ampersand. You know, the symbol for and. And I thought it was a great description of what I saw at low tide. The Diffie estuary ampersand. Now you see it, now you don't. But now's the time the river takes a breath, its energy passed out to sea, Welsh dragon fire extinguished at low tide. Now sandbanks rise, unfurl their necks with golden curls to make an ampersand that calls each river bank to raise a hand and greet the other. Sand formations mirror clouds which lift and drift, bind earth and sky. 
Remind us that a low tide cannot shift the high behind, each ampersand a wealthy bank of meaning. What is submerged when life is in full flow will rise when dry times comes, and ask, and so? I sometimes get poems published in magazines. This one, called War Talk, was in the spring edition of The Eelden Tree, supported by Scottish Borders Council. War Talk Language is kinder than reality, well-meaning, highbrow stuff. Words tell our eyebrows to relax. They bend our ears and calm our fears with logic out of hell. So, friendly fire has only good intentions, if taking out a person by mistake is just some virtual target practice. Smart bombs are really clever. They must demonstrate such sincere skill to make a kill that's clean and peer-reviewed by military intelligence. IEDs are economical with language and with truth, if improvised, suggests it may not work this time around. Sheer damage must be totally excused by multiplying syllables till they spell collateral. Well, to make an omelette you need to break some eggs. And what are eggs but tiny shells in which the future of a species dwells? Au revoir, and thanks for watching.